All right, all the parts are here and I've got them all painted and all I got to do now is put it together and see if I can figure out how to change a tire with this thing. Uh, yeah, keep in mind through this video, this is the first time I've used this machine or a machine with a head on it like this for removing and replacing tires. All right, let's get on with it see what happens. And we bring in our candidate for tire change. That's the spare tire on my trailer. Been hanging on there for a while. The date on this tire is a fresh 24th week of 2011. It's only nine years old. The plan is to bolt this piece of rubber down to this the next time I unbolt it from the floor so it's not moving all over the place. And, all right, that's kind of a pain in the ass. Hmm. First problem, the foot wants to slide over the edge of the rim. It's because of the angle that the tire is laying makes the rubber tire actually slightly higher than the rim right at this point. My solution, for now anyway, just prop it up with a couple 2x4s. And I think that just might work. Let's give it a try and see what we have to change next. All right, you know you like my rim protector. It's made out of a plastic bucket. There'll be more on that in the second part video. Ha ha ha, that's what I thought might happen. There we go. Well, that gets caught in there and pull it, tries to pull itself off if the bead doesn't break all the way, but that's not too bad. Well, this stacking 2x4s to make this tire set level is not too bad, but uh, I'm going to come up with something better than that. And coming up here shortly is where I start bending things again. The back bead on a rim is harder to break because the seat is a little bit wider on the back side of the rim, and it has a little bit of a safety lip to help keep it from coming off if you have a flat or whatever. I don't really know why. But anyway, it takes a little work to pull a bead off the back side of a rim, but I saw this in other people's videos where this part of it did bend, so I figured it would need reinforcing. And we'll reinforce that later. On with the show. I didn't have any lube mixed up in a spray bottle to spray into the gap, but spraying a little lube into the gap as you start to break this bead does help quite a bit. It does work this way. You usually have to walk it around the bead a little bit, get a couple of bites on it to get it loose. That little piece of wire sure helps hold this thing out of the way, but I'm thinking maybe a magnet right at the edge of where the rim sits on to just tap it against the magnet and let the magnet hold it up. Sounds good to me. Woohoo! Lots of flex and everything here. And this is where the top tube did bend a little bit. So, like I said, a little reinforcement. It'll last forever. Maybe. I am not that heavy. And I'm not really, I mean, you know, I'm bouncing on a little bit. but So that's going to have to be strengthened a little bit, or I'm going to have to take it a little easier. Almost 
Well, because I've bent the machine and uh, I don't want to move the pin down one hole, I have to resort to barbarian methods to finish removing the bead. <laughs> but it worked. And with a little bit of weight added to that, it stands straight up and down so I don't have to play with it while I put the rim on. Now my collar that I made, because this is the only aluminum stock I had to cut one out of, isn't big enough for the center hole in the rim. So we have to go with what they gave us and a piece of rubber that I cut out. And because that rim's so flat across the center, I'm going to flip that upside down. Bend the heck out of it. Well, that doesn't hold it as good as the cone does, but it will work, I think. I know, I know, Harbor Freight chip brush, probably not the best for this. Um, forgot to order a brush, but I'll get one. And this will do it for now, I'm sure. I've also got some rim hold down clamps on order. They should show up sometime today, believe it or not, but that'll help me with not having to put my hands here all the time to push this stuff down. And yeah, the ballast town's not out of it yet, but it'll be out of it before I put the new tire on. Alright, keep in mind, this is the first time I've ever used such a high-tech tire changer. Usually I'm on the floor working with these. All right, first time taking the tire off Harbor Freight tire changer mod. Whoops, going wrong way. You need a writer or director to stop these kind of mistakes from happening on camera. Holy cow. That helps if you don't park your tools in the way. So now we got to fire the stage hand too. Putting stuff in the way Holy, all the time. that was easy. Wow. If you've never changed tires on the floor with tire irons before, you probably do not realize how much easier this really is. Uh, it's amazing. Like I said, first time doing it on one of these. Um, probably should have greased the other side of the rim while it was uh, sitting on the floor. All right, I'm gonna get up underneath there, grease this other side of the rim so I'll slide off better and then uh, pull the other side off. Start a little further over there, and ah, And 
second side. Ah, it fell off. And at this point, we have to question, does this guy even know what he's doing? Oh, well, he already said this is the first time using this tire changer. So, uh, take two, and I think it fell off one more time, and then we'll go to the successful startup of peeling off the backside. Two slippery, not getting far enough on her. All right, now she's started. Nope, it's not. Okay, okay, go easy on me. It's the first time using this thing. I still like it, even though it is a little bit hard to get used to. This has just the tiniest bit of lube on it. These are uh, 412 stems, the shortest ones. Tire is lightly greased. At this point, if I had a director, he'd be stopping me and making me say it over again, but uh, it's not grease, it's bead lube, so it's uh, lightly bead lubed. Let's press on. I don't know why, but it wants to fight. I decided to leave this little bit of the video in it seems like it where I tried to use the pry bar with the end protectors on it. Normally, if you're wrestling with a tire on the ground, like I used to change tires before, you just pry it over with the uh, bars. But I decided to go ahead and try it with the duck head after just trying this for just a minute or two. There we go. But uh, I'd say that worked pretty good. So, we started on there again. I'll be glad when I get my bead clamps so I can just drop them in there. But. Whoops. If you haven't built one of these already, make one, unless you're just happy with sitting around waiting on people to change your tires. A couple things I can point out real quick, and then, like I said, there'll be a second video more in depth on how I put this thing together, but this can be any size you want it, it just has to slide together. This just has to fit over the top of the center post. It can have a little bit of wiggle in it, that's fine. I uh, actually put a little plastic inside mine, you'll see that in my second video. Um, I added this so that when I loosen these, raise this up or down, well you gotta loosen them all the way to get it to move. And I raise that up or down, I can raise it up, take it off, and it doesn't fall out. My center bolt stays with the uh, center piece. I need to put a little oil on everything, kind of stiff. But like I said, mine fits real snug because of the plastic inside of it. But all in all, that's how good it works. There's plenty of videos on there, out there on how to change a tire. This was not a how to change a tire video. So, uh, you know, a few mistakes made, but this is the first time I've ever used a Harbor Freight machine. This is the first time I've ever used one of these attachments. And I think for the first time, that's way better than crawling around on the floor. And I got about $100 in the stuff that I bought, maybe. Well worth it. Well, that didn't go bad at all for the first time changing a tire with this thing. I was kind of amazed at how well just the rubber pad held the center of it.
The uh, bead breaker needs a little strengthening. I've put a plate down the center of it and I'm going to have to strengthen the tube coming out. I had a bead breaker before this. I'll show you that at the end of the video. That's why I think this one's kind of wimpy because when you see mine, you can stand on mine. Anyway, this video was just showing the use of it. It's the first time that I've ever used it. And there'll be a part two video showing how I built it and all that good stuff. And, the, and also the things that I bought to build it. One thing, real quick. This. These right here. Those are actually made for a motorcycle. Uh, you don't really need to buy those because I found out that once you put the uh, duck head on the end of that, on and off, you don't need this. The only thing you need is a little tiny bar to flip it up over the end of the duck head. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and uh, part two coming soon. This. Right here is my other bead breaker that I used to use. That's why I think theirs is kind of wimpy. You can jump on this handle, adjust in and out, set that bad boy right there on the bead of the tire and just stand on it if you want to. But I guess it'll get retired now. That was the easiest tire I've ever mounted in my garage or shop. Like I said, I usually do it on the floor with tire iron.